So if you're interested in getting started with API, um, obviously we're doing this webinar, so <laughs> we can help you out there. Uh, we also offer API training for FEMAP, um, but there are also plenty of self-guided resources online that you can find. Uh, we have done a couple of tips and tricks and customer enablement sessions on our YouTube channel that you might be interested in. But there's also the Siemens community site, which is a forum where people can post their own FEMAP APIs or ask for help when working on their own FEMAP APIs. As you're diving into this, here are a couple best practices that I really recommend focusing on. The first one is consider your end users. So you might be developing a program and think to yourself, you know, well, what idiot is gonna put in this, this bogus input? Well, some idiot probably is. So you need to think about, do your users know what to do when they're looking at your program? What happens if they make a mistake? Is your program very forgiving or is it very unforgiving? Definitely you wanna consider that and give your users plenty of feedback as they're using your program as to whether they're, they're using it correctly. Second is add descriptive comments throughout your code. If you're not familiar with comments in code, comments are just text that go into code that are ignored by the computer. So these comments are entirely for you or anyone else who's going to be reading your code. So that means anyone else who's looking at this or you several years from now might be needing to look back at this. These descriptive comments are really going to help you or anyone else figure out what's going on and how to change what they need to change. Next up is create documentation. And this can be something for your end users, like I already mentioned, or this can be something for other people who want to come in and modify your code. Sometimes your code might have some specific limitations that people need to watch out for, whether they're programmers or users. Uh, so you definitely want to keep track of that. Next up is maintaining version control. So just like with your CAD parts, you don't want different people modifying different codes, and now you've ended up with six different versions that do six different things and um, you're kind of kind of lost in there. So do maintain version control across your programs. And finally, test, test, test. Uh, obviously you can't test every single scenario that could happen, but you do wanna work with people who are going to be uh, using your program um, and you want to be using your program in realistic scenarios to determine what, what users might trip over, what your program might trip over, etc. Thanks for checking out our channel. If you like what you saw, make sure to like and subscribe down below so you don't miss out on any new videos. Follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter for the latest engineering news and information. And to see all of our upcoming events, please visit our website at saratech.com events.